Okay, all right. Very good morning, all. So <clears throat> we are going to start with serverless computing today. Okay, that's a that's a very important topic. So far, what we have done is our uh, we have learned concepts of AWS and we have learned so much of important uh, services in AWS such as EC2, S3, EBS, RDS, right, and so on and so forth. Our load balancers, VPCs. Right. So these are some of the concepts that we have learned so far. So now, um, so today, what we are going to do is we're actually going to see a different flavor to, uh, you know, the cloud services, AWS cloud services, which, which are called a paradigm, right? So it's just basically a paradigm of services, paradigm of computing called serverless computing, correct? Um, so the term serverless, right? I mean, why did it come? Right? So let me just give a little more deeper thoughts into the meaning of what is serverless. So now you may be wondering, right, what is this called serverless, right? I mean, anything would need a server right? without a compute storage network, which is actually present within a server. Uh, you know, how can you run applications? How can you build applications? How can you host websites? How can you host applications, right? You may be wondering that, uh, you know, this is not going to be possible, correct? Uh, so, you're right. right. So serverless doesn't mean that you're not using servers. You are using servers, but you don't care about those. Okay, that's what it means. Correct? Uh, so it's it's like this, right? Again, now, uh, when you want to conduct a function at home, correct? Uh, be it a wedding function or whatever it is, right? It's a birthday party. Uh, you can conduct it in two ways, right? So one, uh, you do all the arrangements by yourself, correct? Such as procuring all the uh, items that are required and, uh, you know, taking care of all the arrangements by, all by yourselves, right? And you can basically hire a few people and call your friends, relatives, right? So you do decoration all by yourself, right? Uh, Catering again, you you know cook by yourself. You basically hire cooks and then you chefs and then you cook, cook all all by yourselves, right? So now <clears throat> that's that's basically a self-managed way of doing things, correct? So when you do everything by yourself, that's a self-managed. So now examples of self-managed in the uh, IT industry, especially in the data center world, is you build all your data centers by yourself and you manage everything by yourself, right? So that's basically the um, on-prem data centers where in on-prem data centers, you have to rent a space. You have to find the right electricity provider. You have to build the data center, right? You have to do the interiors of your data center in compliant with whatever standards that you follow, correct? And you'll have to buy, procure all the servers, storage, racks, network, everything, and you have to hire people, you know, who can set it up, right? Who can do racking and stacking of that and install the software and build a layer of hypervisor and do all of this by yourself, right? So that's basically equivalent to that. So now, uh, you, what you can do is you can do one more thing, correct? So now in, in the marriage, the wedding function, you can actually, um, uh, you know, uh, what you can do is you can basically give the, give a contract to somebody, right? For certain specific areas, say such as decoration, right? You can basically give a contract or what you can do is you can actually go ahead and uh, give a contract for uh, say catering right? you can give a contract for catering so the catering guy will take care of all the catering business for you right you don't have to you know go and take the headache of cooking all the food all by yourselves right so that's one way of looking at it where you partially you just give it to somebody and then they take care of it right and uh, in that case what you do you choose the menu, you say that, I mean, I want so and so for breakfast, lunch, dinner, correct snacks, coffee, tea, and so on and so forth, beverages. 
and so then you tell them that this is what I require. And the caterer might have a wide range of menu options with him, with which you choose what you want. But the rest of the things is something that you'll have to take care, right? So for example, serving is something that you don't want to leave it to the caterer, correct? I mean, you want to do the serving by yourself because you think that, you know, it's your, uh, your family wedding function and, uh, you know, your relatives have to serve the guests, right? So that's so that, you know, you basically, uh, you know, demonstrate the love that you have for the guests, right? So, so what you do is you tell the caterer that uh, you just cook and leave everything and we will take care of serving. So that's equivalent to your EC2 instances, correct? Where um, you tell AWS that AWS, I need uh, so-and-so EC2 instances, right? And then I'll go ahead and, uh, you know, uh, I'll, I'll choose those EC2 instances as per the menu options that you have, okay? But you just provision the EC2 instances and give it to me. Right. I mean, you just build the EC2 instances and give it to me. I will take care of the rest of the things, right? It's like serving the uh, EC2 instances, whatever applications that I have inside, I will take care of it. You don't worry about it. I'll take care of it, right? Uh, that is a managed services, right? So that's a cloud computing managed services where partially you have offloaded something to AWS or a cloud provider like AWS. And, you know, you are going to serve the content by yourself where you have to worry about the operating system. You have to worry about the web server application server. And you have to worry about, uh, you know, how the application server web server will uh, maintain its availability, scalability, fault tolerance, and so on and so forth, correct? Very similar to the same catering example where, so in this case, you have to, you don't worry about the cooking part, but you have to worry about the serving part. Right. You have to get so many of relatives. You have to distribute roles to uh, distribute tasks to these relatives saying that, okay, you serve rice, you serve chapati, you serve dal, you serve sambar, you serve, serve rasam, you serve sweet, right? Something like that, correct? You have to cleanly segregate the activities that all your relatives or your friends are supposed to do. Otherwise, what will happen is it will end up in a poor experience, right? A poor user experience or poor guest experience in this case, correct? I mean, if somebody doesn't get sweet properly, I mean, he may actually have the, uh, you know, concern of that, you know, okay, I was not served sweet, right? I mean, we don't want that to happen in any of our home functions, correct? We want all the guests to be very happy, especially when it comes to food, right? So we give so much of importance to food, right? More than anything, right? And that's part of our Indian culture, Aditi Devo Bhava, right? So we give so much of importance to food. And we feel that, you know, guess who, uh, you know, attend our function has to, have to, uh, you know, fill their tummies with delicious food, correct? I mean, only then they will, uh, their hearts will be filled, correct? So that's what we believe in. And that's what we have also experienced, correct? And that's what we also expect when we go to a function, correct? Uh, so, but if you goof up there, if you don't give the right task to the right person, and if they don't serve properly, then what will happen is you will end up, you know, upsetting the guests. Same thing happens here also. In EC2 instances, while EC2 instances, while the caterer has done his job, he has cooked and he has given everything to you. Now it's your job to serve, right? Here also the caterer is EC2, AWS has built the EC2 instructions and they've given it to you. Now you have to ensure that you serve the web content properly, you serve the applications properly. If you don't serve it properly, then you know you are responsible for it, right? I mean, you will end up upsetting your end users where end users will face problems with availability, you know, outages and so on and so forth, right? Because imagine, you know, you uh, don't architect your uh, service pro services properly and your server, because your operating system is very old and it has issues, it's getting attacked, it's getting uh, hacked, right? I mean, if those are the cases, then what will happen is obviously it will impact the end user experience, correct? Okay, so now let's go to the next level. Okay, um, so in the same catering example, you tell the caterer that you 
take responsibility of end to end or you go to a contractor event management and you tell them that because they are experts at it correct because that's the heavy weight lifting that they usually do and they are experts at it because they have got a set of skilled people who have done it multiple times and who have uh, who has good experience in doing this kind of large events right marriage functions and so on and so forth so you tell them that uh, so you take care of this entire responsibility end to end okay right from decoration right from fixing the hall right from choosing the right kind of amenities right uh, food of course i'll tell you what food uh, menu that we need but you cook you take care of serving and the serve the service has to be extremely good because you know our guests are very particular that people who serve understand you know the uh, you know the uh, are able to understand you know what the guests require right so it's so they have to be so diligent in serving the food so no guest should basically return with a uh, uh, with return upset about this whole thing right so 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 these are the requirements that you tell them and i mean you don't even have to tell them right so they take care of it right because they are experts at it so as as far as you are concerned right i mean since you have offloaded this whole thing to the contractor right to a event management company as far as you are concerned you only focus on the function because that's your main job right i mean when somebody is getting married and uh, when there are parents of you know the boy and girl who are, who are getting married the parents job is to ensure that they get them married properly with all the rituals with all the um you know customs that needs to be followed for the marriage and ensure that you know the marriage function becomes successful right so of course there are other things which are important right like catering like choice of the function hall and these are all very very important aspects of this whole thing right um of course they are important but you know most important from you know the parents perspective is they have to ensure that all the rituals and the core of the ma- marriage itself is made quite successful and fulfilling correct so that's their job uh so in this case so they focus only on the core marriage on ensuring that you know they uh you know take care of the guests properly right and then they spend enough time on the rituals customs right and uh, ensure that you know the marriage function becomes a happy event and a memorable event correct the rest of the other things are taken care of by somebody who is an expert at it right so who because that's the heavy weight lifting right all of us know right all of us would have attended marriages we, and we would have organized marriages wedding functions for our friends relatives cousins and so on and so forth right so now from that perspective it's very very important that you focus on the other things or focus on the core marriage and uh, you know hand hand over the other aspects which is called the heavy weight lifting to a person who is expert at it and whom you trust okay For, forget about the trust factor right who is an expert at it and who has done it several times and they are like masters at it right you don't have to worry about it and they will take care of everything okay uh, so now this is where serverless computing plays a major role where if you take the data center right so now we have come out of the data center from the first example to second example in the second example we are on ec2 instances we are on cloud but still on ec2 instances we have to worry about the operating system we have to worry about the software we have to worry about the patch levels we have to worry about the backup restore blah 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 correct right? performance and everything uh, so now go to one level higher where you don't worry about all of this right so because there are experts like aws uh, who has enough technology and automation and uh, uh, you know innovation to take care of that you focus only on your business logic as an application developer if i want to build some if i want to build an e-commerce website right i've got a startup idea and i want to build my startup idea i have to take it to my next level so i uh, want to build you know certain things certain unique things correct so now will i worry about the core business logic of building that or will i worry about are where should i hire my data center uh, you know what sort of uh, operating system should i choose 
what sort of patch that i need to because we see these are all operational elements right they're like massive in nature right even you take the example of marriage of of a wedding function uh, you leave aside the core marriage function at right you look at the other peripheral things such as catering uh, you know the reception right and the other thing and so on and so forth right they're all massive right i mean they need a lot of effort they need a lot of uh you know physical uh, you know activity which is required correct right? i mean that is where you will have to be diligent and outsource that entire thing to somebody and you focus only on your core wedding function so that you ensure that you know as whatever be the customs that you follow you focus 100% on that customs and you make that successful and the rest of the things are taken care by someone else right so who's good at it who who are experts at it right similarly here the customs is the core business logic correct you focus only on the core business logic and you outsource all the other peripheral things the heavy weight lifting to someone else who is good at it okay this is precisely what a serverless computing is all about okay remember these Sairam, three examples sir. yeah uh, are you sharing anything we are not able no i'm not speak. sharing Sorry. i'm just speaking i'm not oh. sharing Yeah. Okay, okay. So this, yeah, I see. I can't put a diagram for all of this and explain. I'm just speaking. Yeah. So the, this is precisely, you know, what uh, serverless computing is all about, correct? Where it's not that you don't have servers, right? That serverless doesn't mean that you don't have servers. You still have servers, but you don't manage those, right? So when you correlate this to a wedding function, uh, you know, it's not that you know, uh, this there's no wedding function. with foodless right <laughs> you can say that foodless wedding function so then nobody will even attend that wedding function correct it's not like that where i mean you are still serving delicious food but you are not worrying too much about the nitty gritties of you know cooking and uh, you know ensuring that you know it is served properly so that part you are not worried about right so because you have handed it over to a trusted partner Uh, you know who is good at it and he will take care of it right so that's that's the whole idea so here also when you go for a serverless computing you don't worry about the underlying servers that are running right it can be ec2 it can be fargate or it can be anything else it can be any size of underlying servers it can be any operating system underlying right i mean you don't worry about it you only build the application business logic and then you host it and AWS will take care of running it on underlying servers, which you will not even have visibility into, right? For example, Lambda is a example, right? So where Lambda function basically helps, uh, uh, you know, set up a function as a service, right? And that's where, if you see, Lambda functions will actually help. Okay. Anyways, there are so many serverless functions that AWS offers. Okay, I'm sharing my screen now. Uh, so this is the, yeah. Uh, so can you say serverless computing as a platform as a service? Kind of. Okay. Partially, okay. yes. But it's it's not the traditional platform as a service. But yeah, you can say kind of it's a platform as a service because it's kind of it's a different paradigm altogether, right? More than a platform as a service. Okay. Sir. Okay. Yes. yes sir. all right so um what's a serverless um you build and run applications without thinking about servers you're you're not thinking about servers which doesn't mean that you're not using servers right that's the definition of serverless right you're conducting a marriage function without thinking about catering okay without thinking about you know the other arrangements because someone else is thinking about it that's that's the way you should look at it because someone else is seriously thinking about it okay you don't have to think about it you only focus on the core business logic which is building your applications and posting it and getting it to run correct you ensure that the core business logic itself is error free that's that's your job as a developer as a cloud uh, you know operations or a cloud engineer okay aws offers technologies for running code managing data and integrating applications all without managing servers you don't have to manage servers See, these are the keywords that you need to basically grasp right managing servers 
I don't have to manage the servers. I don't have to manage the catering. I don't have to manage the serving. Someone else is managing it. Serverless technologies feature automatic automatic scaling, built-in high availability, and pay-for-use billing model. Okay. Again, going back to my example of catering business, uh, the caterer takes care of scaling or you know cooking more food if more people come of course there's going to be a estimate that will be given by you right to the caterer saying that okay i'm expecting 200 people 300 people 400 people but what if suddenly 100 more people turns up right so it's basically the caterer's job to ensure that he's ready with enough food raw material to prepare food and serve right so that's basically uh, the thing so uh, serverless technologies feature automatic scaling built in high availability and pay for use model right i mean if 100 more people come up then he is going to charge for 100 more plates that he has served so which means that you know uh, you don't have to really worry about i mean if you don't have to say that okay i need 1000 plates of food right and then end up wasting 500 plates right you only uh, you know say that okay i'm expecting 300 people but it can go up to 600, 700 people, but I don't know. But you cook for 300 people, right? And as more people come in, you cook and keep adding more to the uh, menu, right? So that's that's what it means, right? So so that way you're also optimizing cost, right? So that if you're only cooking for 600 people and you're not wasting the food for 400 people. So these technologies can also eliminate infrastructure management tasks like capacity provisioning and patching. You don't have to worry about that, right? You don't have to worry about the capacity provisioning patching. So you can focus on writing code that serves your customers. Serverless applications start with AWS Lambda and event-driven compute service natively integrated with over 200 AWS services and software as a service applications. Okay, Lambda is one of the core of AWS serverless portfolio of services. Okay, so you have to uh, understand, you know, how Lambda works. We are going to do all of that, you know, in tomorrow's session, where I'm going to actually uh, speak more about Lambda and API Gateway, and we are going to actually do a lab assignment on Lambda and API Gateway. So don't worry too much about it, but just understand that Lambda is a function as a service, correct? I mean, you don't have to worry about the underlying infrastructure operating system, right? So you want to actually build an application that needs one function, which uh, as soon as a file gets arrived, a CSV file or a JPEG image or a video file that, that arrives in a particular storage location, the job of this Lambda function is to pick up that file uh, process that file, right? And then upload it elsewhere, correct? Uh, so that's basically one of the use cases, correct? That usually that I can think of. So in this case, the Lambda function is basically a function as a service, right? You only write the function and the necessary business logic that is required for the function. And then you invoke the function through an event-driven, right? What is an event-driven? Okay, an event-driven is something like this, right? If I were to correlate it to a real world um okay so it's like this right so now um, if you go to uh if, if you go to public sector organizations usually right like banks you know post offices government organizations right especially the consumer facing or the customer facing you know, employees you know, who are actually sitting in the counter, sitting at the counter, correct? For example, you want to pay electricity bill, right? Or you want to basically pay something, pay property tax, or you want to pay something, right? So, or you go to a post office, correct? I mean, you want to send a speed post to somebody, correct? So now the clerk at the reception or the counter, the respective counter would be waiting there okay the, he, he or she will be present at the counter during the business hours so now you go there and you hand over the 
letter to the clerk, right? And the clerk would actually take it up and start processing it. So that's basically an event driven architecture, correct? So the clerk is waiting for any event or any person to arrive, correct? Uh, their job is that, okay? Their job is to just receive and process that letter or whatever that you need to do, correct? Uh, send a, <coughs> excuse me, so send a speed post or pay some bill, utility bills and so on and so forth. Right? Their job is to keep waiting. They'll, they'll keep on waiting there. It's like a cashier at the bank counter, right? You go to a cashier's bank counter, the cashier would be waiting for a, a, a consumer or an account holder to come. He will take it and he will process it. Okay. So that's basically an event driven computing, correct? So where the event, the, the function as a service will keep on waiting for any event to arrive. In this case, an event is a person walking up to the counter and handing over something to the clerk, right? Or a cashier. Uh, so in this case, a function as a service will be waiting for some event to happen and you can design the nature of that event in whatever way that you want, correct? So now here in this case, the function as a service will keep on waiting. As soon as a file arrives at a particular location, it will pick up that file. It will start processing that file. Okay. So now what will happen is when uh, there are two counters, correct? And suddenly hundred people arrive. What will happen is then they'll queue up. Correct? So they'll stand in a queue, and wait for the cashier or clerk to complete one at a time. And they'll be able to get their job done correct so now even in architecture even in com uh, even in computing architecture there are some patterns which can queue up your requests in such a way that and also what uh, you know the function as a service or lambda can do is it can scale itself automatically to meet that demand okay it can clone itself right imagine you're going to a bank right and to deposit some money there's one cashier counter right Suddenly there are hundred people. Okay, they've got some. Uh, they've got a bonus, and you know all all the hundred people are there to deposit some cash in, into their respective accounts. Correct. Suddenly hundred people land. Imagine the cashier cloning himself into hundred times and uh, addressing all the hundred people at the same time. Okay, that's not possible in a real world, but that's possible in serverless computing. Okay, where the lambda function can instantiate itself for those many times, for those many events that it receives, and it can serve all the events at the same time, all the hundred events at the same time. So that is the scalability part of lambda function. Okay. Uh, so now a lot of software applications, use, so SaaS applications use lambda, and about 200 AWS services are integrated natively with lambda okay um so now what are the benefits of using serverless computing move from idea to market faster right eliminate operational overhead so your teams can release quickly get feedback and iterate to get to the market faster right so these are all operational overhead again going back to the uh, wedding example uh, the whole catering business uh, is is an operational overhead right I mean, you have to manage it well, and there's a lot of operations involved in that, correct? So you eliminate all of that, right? And then you get, uh, you know, you, you basically get to the market much faster, lower the cost with the pay for value billing model. Like if a Lambda function executes 10 times, you'll be charged only 10 times. Whereas if it is charged, if it is executed 10 million times, then you get charged for 10 million times. So that way, whereas in EC2 instances, you have to keep the EC2 instance on all the time. For that capacity correct imagine the same file processing example you achieve using an ec2 instance where uh, you build that same business logic and you host it on some web server like apache or whatever jboss um, right or is and then you host it on an ec2 instance you have to ensure that your ec2 instance uh bare minimum set of ec2 instances are running all the time right so which could be you know, as small as like four EC2 instances, two in each availability zone. Okay, so you have to bear that minimum, bare minimum cost. Whereas in function as a service, you don't have to worry about that because usually the way Lambda works is 
for each lambda execution there is a per millisecond uh, execution time that is metered right for example if your lambda function runs for 200 milliseconds you are charged for 200 milliseconds and the amount of memory your lambda function uses makes use of okay because at the end of the day uh, your lambda function would need to do some operation which needs memory correct so you have to specify the amount of memory that your lambda function requires so that your lambda function will provision equivalent amount of cpus for the lambda function to execute and it can run the function it can run the code give the results back and it kills itself that's the way it works right imagine a function that runs for say 200 milliseconds so what happens within this 200 milliseconds is the lambda function comes up with allocated memory and with allocated cpu it runs the code runs the business logic of this code once the business logic is completed then it kills itself this is what happens if you run this run this for a million times every time this is what happens within the lambda technology right so that's the state of the art technology that aws uses behind the scenes to run the lambda functions okay uh, you don't need any ec2 instances you don't have to provide any ec2 instances nothing of that sort you are going to see that tomorrow right so don't worry if you're not able to grasp it right now but you're going to see it right i mean if you are running the same piece of code on an ec2 instance you know what it takes right so because all of us are good at masters at spinning off ec2 instances uh, you know installing a apache web server and running some sort of html code or a php or python on top of it correct uh, but but that's not the case in lambda right in lambda you don't specify any ec2 instance any operating system any patch level any web server any application server nothing you only specify whether you want to choose python you want to choose uh, java you want to choose dotnet right the, only these are the things that you specify and then you just write the code and run it it just simply runs okay so that's what happens in lambda as well right so you don't have to worry about anything underlying right so it just comes up runs the code and dies in fact lambda uses something called firecracker Okay, it's actually an open source virtualization uh, technology. Okay, it uses something called Firecracker, right? So which is what you know Lambda is basically based upon. So it's called micro virtual machines, lightweight micro virtual machines. Uh, it can actually get virtual it can get instantiated in a fraction of second right so when you when you want to provision an ec2 instance it takes at least a few minutes correct for an ec2 instance to come up because it's heavy in nature and it has got so much of it's a, it just got a complete operating system to run but whereas micro vms are not like that. micro vms can come up in probably uh, less than a millisecond or a few milliseconds correct so that's the overhead that it has it has very little overhead okay in fact, you can just read about my, uh, you know, firecracker and micro VMs offline, but, but that's the technology that Lambda functions use behind the scenes. Okay. Anyways, adapt at scale with technologies that automate scale from zero to peak demands you can adapt to customer needs faster than ever, build applications, better applications and easier serverless applications have built in service integration. So you can focus on building your application instead of configuring it. Okay. So. Okay, so if you see, these are all the serverless services that AWS offers so on compute. There's something called Lambda, which I just spoke about, which you can use to build event-driven applications, uh, and uh, which can respond to events, and where you don't need to maintain any infrastructure, you don't need to maintain any VMs, you don't need to maintain any operating system of nothing of that sort, where you just focus on business logic. You build a function, you run that function on Lambda. There's something called Fargate. Fargate is a serverless service for containers, right? So if you want to run ECS, which is Elastic Container Service or EKS, which is Kubernetes, Elastic Kubernetes Service, which is basically a managed service offering by Amazon for Kubernetes users, uh, you can use Fargate as the underlying compute platform. 
and then on the integration on the application integration side we have got a bunch of services such as event bridge which is a serverless event bus right so which a lot of events are coming this is basically a bus event bus which which can integrate all those events and route them and scale appropriately step functions is for building workflows right because workflows are very important correct i mean you go for anything you there's a workflow you go to public sector there's a workflow in a public sector right like for example you want to open a bank account there's a workflow for it right you first go meet the manager get a application or fill an online application submit that application then the application goes through a workflow the manager would ask you you know your address proof id proof some introduction etc etc right so once that is done so then he takes it to someone else for approval once that approval is done so then he creates an account for you then he asks you to put a minimum balance in it etc etc right so these are all like i'm just relating it to the real world scenario so because at the end of the day workflows are very uh, you know uh, you know they they kind of used in the real world you know very frequently sqs is a queue service right it's a simple query service uh and it's basically used for queuing right so when when you need a queue right where you want to push some messages to queue and the queue will take care and anybody can read from the queue and use that messages for their applications correct so in such cases like weather updates right uh, usually you know there is a meteorological department uh, like in our case imd is there imd actually pushes messages into a queue and all the websites would actually pull messages from the queue saying that okay uh, hyderabad this is the weather this is the rain forecast and so on and so forth sns is a notification service right for example as you build applications you need some mechanism to notify end users notify something like you want to notify or you want to even push something to a log correct right? uh so sns is there and you want to send email notifications right sns is a service that is used for it's a fully managed messaging service api gateway is again an interesting service we can actually going to do a lab session on api gateway tomorrow api gateway is a fully managed service that makes it easy to create and publish apis at any scale right so it's it's basically a gateway with which you pass through and then you will see a lot of apis you hit one api and you get response back from the api and now api gateway is something like you know which can manage the scale and which can do rate limiting and so on and so forth right so for example uh if my application is getting say 100 hits on an average right per hour suddenly that 100 hits increase to a million hits then it means that something is wrong or it's something either this way or that way right either something is wrong or really your service is picked up in the market okay uh, well, if it is picked up in the market then well and good but if some hacker is trying to create some sort of a coordinated distributed denial of service attacks then you are in a deep mess correct so in that in such cases api gateway limits the requests that can that are sent to the backend in such a way that it only limits to 100 requests per minute or per hour okay all that is possible using api gateway you can ap gateway uses all http standards the standard rest api standards a lot of you said that you know you are aware of rest api so now you can actually use rest api and you actually use api gateway to build those rest api okay and again app sync is a fully managed service that accelerates application development with graphql api so it's a graphql is something that we learned about in our database it's a so it's basically a graph query language for building say social media applications like linkedin facebook and all okay that's on the middleware the data store is basically the backend database where you can use s3 as the backend data store to store files store objects and all of us know what how s3 can be used correct right? you can create a bucket and you can store anything in that bucket and you can query that bucket correct right? uh amazon dynamo db all of us have done examples with that using dynamo db it's a key value document database service delivering single digit millisecond performance at any scale it does you don't have to worry about the underlying infrastructure you simply go store as much as data as you want and you put as much as load as you want to dynamo db 
you will still get a single millisecond latency. RDS, all of us know RDS, but RDS proxy is a service that makes applications more scalable and secure. I'll not go deep into that. And Aurora is again, you know, uh, it's a database service, correct? A relational database service, but Aurora serverless is a completely serverless service where you don't have to worry about choosing the, you know, t2.micro or c5.xlarge or r5.2xlarge, nothing of that sort, right? Aurora serverless takes care of everything automatically and it automatically scales depending on your application needs, right? So that's basically the Aurora serverless. Now there are a bunch of, uh, you know, use cases that standard use cases. So here, build a sample to-do list web app that enables a registered user to create, update, view, and delete items. And even driven web application may use Lambda API Gateway for its business logic and DynamoDB as its database. And Amplify console to host all static content. Okay, so if you see, uh, users will hit Cognito. Cognito is again a serverless service that uses, that is for uh, create, creating authentication for your application, right? So you want to build an application and you want to create an authentication, you can use Cognito. And you also want your application to integrate with single sign-on providers like Amazon, Google, Facebook, Twitter, LinkedIn. You can use Cognito to easily integrate it with the with a social sign-on. It's called social sign-on. Right? So you can use some Cognito to do social sign-on. This is the Lambda function. Uh, sorry, this is the API gateway to do API. And it has got one, two, three, one, two, three, four, five, six functions. Each function has got, has got a job to do, but API gateway is the one which is actually sending the request to the Lambda functions, which is invoking the Lambda functions. And behind the scenes, you have a DynamoDB table, right? This is basically a Lambda based uh, data processing, right? So where, as I said, uh, go back to the clerk or, uh, you know, cashier example, deliver notes from an interview in markdown format to S3, right? Use S3 to trigger multiple workflows, right? So S3 will actually trigger, right? So when a Lambda function needs to execute, S3 will trigger that Lambda function as soon as it receives a new file. Okay, and a new file comes in, it triggers that and it'll, allow the Lambda function to do it and batch processing. There are so many batch processing examples that are there, right? In real world, if you go, when you start your jobs, when you start understanding how enterprise systems work, batch processing is one thing that is very, very important for enterprises, right? So where there's so many batch jobs that run, sometimes what happens is when I make a credit card transaction, it's not immediately reflected in my current statement, correct? At least that happens in ICICI a lot. Uh, usually it takes about 24 hours for, for that to reflect in my uh, current account, current statement, credit card statement. So the reason is there is a batch process that runs every day night where ICICI gathers all the transactions that are done by users through the day. And then they do a bulk update to their respective current account statements. So that's possible using serverless event ingestion. Again, as I said, you, you can... Uh, you know, when objects are stored in S3 buckets, you can simply take that and use something called recognition, Amazon recognition service. It's a service that can run OCR on images and text. Yeah, and then you extract those, like for example, right? If somebody uploads, um, you know, an image, right, or a, a scanned image, JPEG of a page, right, of a Word document. So now recognition can easily convert it back into text format using OCR, optical character recognition. That's called OCR. That's a technology which is in uh, a prevalence over the last several decades. It's not something new, but now it has become a lot more robust and a lot more accurate. And in fact, this is a machine learning service, right? Recognition is also a machine learning service. And Comprehend is also again another machine learning service that AWS uses. Okay, anyways, so now these are all some of the customers that, for example, Tacobel, right? What is Tacobel? Tacobel is basically a global food chain. I mean, so they 
uh, you know, uh, rapidly shifted their 7,000 US distance from indoor, indoor dining to delivery, right? So then you may imagine, right? So what it takes, right? So for example, Swiggy is there, right? So Swiggy, if they have to deliver Pan India across all the cities, so many restaurants, millions of users, imagine the scale. Swiggy or Zomato, right? So the global food, fast food chain used a serverless strategy to increase agility so they could pivot in weeks and scale up easily. There's also a video, you can watch this video later. Liberty Mutual Insurance. Okay, uh, the comp if you see the in the Liberty Mutual Mutual Insurance, the company lowered computing cost to just dollar sixty per million transactions. Right, for a million transactions, the cost was just sixty dollars. Coca Cola, okay, uh, a touchless drink dispenser was uh, developed in just hundred days using serverless computing. Okay, anyways, I'll just I have a short video to play. Let's just present this video. When you're building applications, you want them to deliver a great experience for your users. Maybe you want your application to generate in-app purchase options during a gaming session, rapidly validate street address updates, or make image thumbnails available instantly after a user uploads photos. To make this magic happen, your application needs backend code that runs in response to events like image uploads, in-app activity, website clicks, or sensor outputs. But managing the infrastructure to host and execute backend code requires you to size, provision, and scale a bunch of servers, manage operating system updates, apply security patches, and then monitor all this infrastructure for performance and availability. Wouldn't it be nice if you could just focus on building great applications without having to spend lots of time managing servers? Introducing AWS Lambda. AWS Lambda is a compute service that runs your backend code in response to events such as object uploads to Amazon S3 buckets, updates to Amazon DynamoDB tables, data in Amazon Kinesis streams, or in-app activity. Once you upload your code to Lambda, the service handles all the capacity, scaling, patching, and administration of the infrastructure to run your code and provides visibility into performance by publishing real-time metrics and logs to Amazon CloudWatch. All you need to do is write the code. AWS Lambda is very low cost and does not require any upfront investment. When you use AWS Lambda, you're simply charged a low fee per request and for the time your code runs, measured in increments of 100 milliseconds. Getting started with AWS Lambda is easy. There are no new languages, tools, or frameworks to learn. You can use any third-party library, even native ones. The code you run on AWS Lambda is called a Lambda function. You just upload your code as a zip file, or design it in the integrated development environment in the AWS Management Console. Or you can select from a list of function samples pre-built for common use cases such as image conversion, file compression, and change notifications. And built-in support for the AWS SDK makes it easy to call other AWS services. Once your function is loaded, you select the event source to monitor, such as an Amazon S3 bucket or Amazon DynamoDB table, and within a few seconds, Lambda will be ready to trigger your function automatically when an event occurs. With Lambda, any event can trigger your function, making it easy to build applications that respond quickly to new information. To learn more about AWS Lambda, visit our website and you can get your first Lambda function up and running with a few clicks in the AWS Management Console. And with the AWS free tier, you can try Lambda for free. Okay, cool. So, so that's for the AWS Lambda, correct? Okay. And also, what you can do is, uh, there are, in fact, what I would suggest you to follow is you, you, you can follow this channel, right? Amazon Web Services channel in YouTube. Okay, I've already subscribed to that. So you can also go subscribe to this. It has got lot of interesting stuff right so the thing that i wanted to show you was you can actually go to this this is my architecture 
for him right and uh, you know you can check yeah so if you actually go to this this is my architecture and in fact you can also go here it up just products and services so what you can do is you can actually choose the serverless out here you will see everything right and there's on ec2 spot instances containers on aws alexa for business uh vmware cloud right uh, so if i just open this you will see uh serverless here machine learning um serverless 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 where is it demos those workloads Places application modernization, uh, light sale, open source, translate on set. Let's see if it is called differently. Or, or you can just go to this AWS products and services. AWS yeah, out here, you know, you can actually search for serverless services and you can watch those because these are all short short videos right not very lengthy videos that will take hours of your time yeah what is amazon recognition right i, was, I just spoke about recognition Having someone comb through images and videos to extract specific insights is costly, time-intensive, prone to error, and hard to scale. Amazon recognition... Sorry, sorry. I just realized that I just made a mistake. Uh, in the previous um, the architectures that I was explaining there, uh, for one of that, you know, it was actually using recognition. Right? Recognition is actually a machine learning service that will recognize an image right so you give an image and you train that machine learning model to recognize say for example you have an image and you want to recognize say humans versus other uh, you know animals right uh, there are animals and there are humans in a particular image and you want to basically recognize animals like all dogs you want to recognize right recognition is a service it's a serverless machine learning service that will allow you to do that the OCR engine is called Textract. Okay, that's called the OCR engine. In fact, I, I think I got confused between Textract and Recognition. Textract is the OCR engine and Recognition is a machine learning image recognition service. ...is a fully managed computer vision service that helps you move past manual inspection by automating your image and video analysis with highly scalable deep learning technology. You can use Amazon recognition to solve a variety of business challenges. And the best part is you don't need any machine learning experience to use it. With Amazon recognition, you get highly accurate facial analysis and matching, as well as object, scene, segment, and text detection that you can use to find specific content in large numbers of images and videos. You can automatically tag media content to make it searchable and flag inappropriate content so that you can enforce policies, comply with regulations, and protect your brand. Using facial analysis, you can identify and verify users, such as customers, students, and sellers, by matching their faces with their identity document pictures. Amazon Recognition Custom Labels extends object detection capabilities even further, allowing you to quickly train custom models by simply supplying labeled images that are unique to your business. Use custom labels to find your corporate logo and images. Identify your products and analyze inventory on store shelves. And classify parts on your assembly line. Let machine learning do the work for you. Get started with Amazon recognition today. Yeah, so this is one example, right? The volume of data. Similarly, you can actually uh, all, all these are all short, short videos, right? I mean, but you will get a lot of knowledge and understanding of what each uh, 
you know, what are the different types of use cases that are possible with AWS services, mainly the serverless services. Again, I'm just trying to search for something else. Yeah, this is Textract that I was talking about, right? So where with Textract, you'll be able to run OCR on images. Introduction to S3. You, you all have seen this video earlier. <clears throat> Okay, anyways, I mean, so simply if you just go to Amazon Web Services channel in YouTube, it has already has got 556K subscribers, which you can just go ahead and subscribe to those and you will get. Uh, so here, uh, there's also one more interesting thing called, this is my architecture. It's very, very interesting where you will see real architectures of customers where the customers present the real architectures, right? So for example, let me just take an architecture. <clears throat> you see all these are customer names, right? Maitona, um, T-Mobile, 7-Eleven. 7-Eleven is a grocery store in the US. Salesforce. Imperva, Imperva is a you know, networking CDN WAF service. Accenture. PwC, Nielsen, they're all big logos, correct? Yeah, see this platform, uh, serverless platform for end to end browser testing using Chromium on AWS Lambda. So let's just watch this. Welcome to This Is My Architecture. I'm Benjamin from AWS. We are here in Tel Aviv, Israel. Today I'm joined by Tom from Wix. Hi, Tom. Hi, Benjamin. Thanks for joining us. Thank you for having me. Tom, tell us a little bit about what Wix does. As you know, Wix is an online presence platform serving about 5% of the world's website with uh, over 700 million unique users per month. Okay, so right off the bat, you're operating at quite a bit of scale. Yeah, it's high scale. And today we wanted to talk about your SLED system. Tell us what SLED does. So uh, SLED is an end-to-end -end testing framework we developed here at Wix, and it's mostly based on AWS uh, Lambda infrastructure. Okay, so testing to, to, to test for uh, production changes to your, to your websites. Um, what kind of scale are we talking about for those? So uh, let's say the average rate for production changes and deployments, I'm talking about unique deployments, is about 400 a day. All right, so 400 deployments a day, you're gonna be testing automatically, you're gonna be testing all the time. All right, so how do you test on SLED? So uh, the first thing we do is uh, SLED is a node library installed on a laptop or the CI machine at build time, doesn't really matter. The first thing we do is that uh, we execute the test. Let's say that the developer writes a simple test, an end-to-end -end test using Puppeteer and Jest and uh, good and popular open source libraries. The first thing we do is we want to make sure that okay. the user uh, just in All right, so let me just exactly. pause this. So I just wanted to show you, you know, how these videos can educate you and you can basically learn various different architectural, uh, you know, patterns. I mean, these are not, again, you know, you don't have to be an architect to understand these things, right? I mean, as a developer, as a cloud engineer, you know, I'm sure, you know, once you learn these concepts, you'll be able to, uh, you know, quickly grasp some of these architectural patterns that there are thousands and thousands of such, right? I mean, if you see, this, this is my architecture. I've got so many videos here that right? you can actually watch. 
some of them that you feel interested in right and this is the forum this is the page please i mean i urge all of you to go ahead and subscribe to this page and then you can watch all latest videos that may come up at least spend about 20 minutes 30 minutes to watch these videos right i mean uh, i mean you know what i mean we can take a pledge correct that uh, instead of i mean uh, i mean we spend hours and hours on social media facebook twitter on a daily basis correct uh, assume you know we spend about 3 hours on an average on daily to spend on facebook and twitter and youtube correct so just take 20 minutes out of it okay just take 20 minutes out of it and watch these videos okay and make it a practice right if you make it a practice to watch these videos for on an average like 20 to 30 minutes daily right so that becomes your habit right then slowly keep increasing that right so then you reduce your facebook time from 3 hours to half an hour right half an hour is okay it's a healthy statistic right if you spend half an hour to 45 minutes on facebook daily that is more than enough okay all right so i just so you can just follow this amazon web services channel okay out here all righty so <clears throat> um so what i what what you are going to do today is uh, just just go to this i'm going to ping you this url okay any questions on serverless so far no questions okay all right no no problem so if you actually go here i don't know somebody has annotated my screen please clear this please please don't annotate okay all right uh, so if you actually go here and uh, go to this page that i just pinged you so out here you will see uh, all these customers use cases right so you can whether you understand or not that's okay doesn't matter so just go through these and uh, you can you can actually read the story and watch this video right i mean here i think there was a video here right tacobel had a video so just watch this video right uh, it's it's a 2 minute video you can just watch this video right and what you can do is you can just go go back to this page right and hit on getting started and uh, Uh, you you can just go through this right you can just go through this and you don't have to go too deep into understanding each and everything i'm going to come to that in tomorrow's session where i'm going to introduce you to api gateway and lambda but you know right now what i want you to do is i want you to understand you know what are the various different services the aws services that serverless services that are there right and how map each one of those to you know the function that it performs correct i just want you to understand those right so that's 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 my primary intent right and you can just go through the faqs okay so in fact at amazon we have got a very interesting culture right mm it's called pr faq culture right so pr public relations right pr is the whole marketing pr event that happens right the faqs you know what before any new service or new product is built uh we first write the faq for the product and the press release for that product okay it's a very peculiar culture but that's what we do right i mean usually what we do when we build a service then when we want to launch it we call for press and we call the media and just before that even maybe a week before that even we write uh the press release notes right saying that okay the service is built with so and so things these are the features of the service these are the capabilities of the service and this is what our product does etc etc and then we also give it to launch it in our website saying that in our press release page of the website we launch it and also we give it out to media right so newspapers 
uh, you know, a uh, lot of online journals and so on and so forth, right? That's what usually people do. But here at Amazon, we do it very, very differently, right? I mean, we first, if somebody has a thought about certain new product or new service, first the press release of that product will be written down as a narrative because that is called the long-term thinking, right? On the day of press release, you want to speak about your product. You should have that thinking before even you build that product. That's called the PR a press release FAQ process that we follow, right? And then we also release, we also write a set of FAQs that speaks about the frequently asked questions about a particular service on day zero, not on the day end. Day end is basically the launch of the product, but we do that on day zero and we work backwards from there, right? So now if you want to make a product interesting and if you want to make a particular service attractive, right? There are certain characteristics that the product needs to have, correct? So now that product, uh, then you need to think of what those interesting characteristics would be, which will make you to win in the market or make the customers or consumers successful, correct? That's the whole idea, correct? So from that standpoint, uh, that is thought, thought through. And then the product is engineered according to that, right? And it's not the other way around, right? Usually people do it the other way around. They first build it and then they retrofit their messaging according to the capabilities of the product. Thereby, they're actually limiting themselves. But that's not the case here, right? We first define, okay, a car should be like this. Car should go at this speed and car should have these, these features. That is decided on day zero. And the press release is also made. I mean, made in the sense virtually, not physically or logically. The press release notes are defined on day zero. And come day end, when the press release is actually made and the launch of the product is or the service is made, then the same press release that was decided on day zero is actually given to public. So that's the PR FAQ. In fact, you can read about that, right? Amazon um, PR FAQ process. Press release FAQ process, right? So if you see, this is a very interesting video. You can just watch this also. Okay, working backwards, Amazon's approach to innovation, right? So it's basically, this is one video that you can watch later on, not now, when you have free time, right? So, if, I mean, the half an hour time that I said, no, on a daily basis. You can watch these kind of videos there. Okay, all right, let me just go back. Okay, this is one thing that I want you to read today. The second thing is, if you go to the products, correct, and uh, if you come to serverless, Right. Uh, just select the serverless and you can actually, these are all the serverless services that AWS offers. Okay. So it's just quickly browse through all of this. Right. And that's the assignment for today. Because, uh, I, don't, I don't want you to do any lab session today. I've got a lab decided for tomorrow, which I'm going to give it to you for tomorrow. So 28 December, I've got a lab session for tomorrow, where we are actually going to use Lambda, SNS, SQ, Secrets Manager, and also API Gateway, okay? Using one particular sample that we have, okay? We are going to do that tomorrow, okay? Okay, all right, so, yeah, so that's what we are going to do tomorrow. So let's now go ahead and, uh, uh, do the serverless learning. So 101 of serverless learning using the link that I just gave you. And you can watch some of the videos that are there in the YouTube channel. Okay, so any questions? We have probably 10 more minutes. I can take a few questions and do you have any questions? Sir, when we're going to do part two of the project, sir. Part two of the project, we'll do it later. Okay, once we complete serverless, then we'll do the part two. In fact, I can give you the part two of the project, right? Those of you who are willing to take up the challenge can do it. Okay, sir. Are you game for it? To do the part two by yourself? So I will try, sir. Okay, all right.
any questions on serverless any thoughts any initial reactions sir are you going to cover all the three sir so please go one by one sp26 is asking something Okay, please go next. Okay, the benefits and advantages of uh, serverless based uh, like Lambda. So. Yeah, so you can build applications much faster. You don't have to worry about the underlying infrastructure, and uh, you don't have to worry about the cost as well, right? I mean, cost is going to be very very less as compared to normal virtualized on running it on EC two instances, uh, where you decide. you know what sort of instance size that you require and what sort of uh, operating system that you require so you don't have to worry about all of that the cost is going to be much lesser agility and cost these are the two major benefits any other okay in fact what i'll do is let me give you the project the part two of the project correct if you want me to do it i'll do it but you first take a shot at it right can you do it first and come back going to give that project here let's put it in the chat in fact there are a couple of other sessions that are still pending one is on the whole management correct the monitoring management and also python and cli is still pending i'm going to come to that let's first complete these two projects and later half of this week is something that we're going to spend on the other topics they are also equally important okay i'm just giving the project which is the part 2 of project 1 part 1 of the project was given on saturday i've just given the part 2 of the project so those of you uh, those those of you who have completed the part 1 you can start with this Okay, it's a slightly longer one, which has got more complexity in it, but that's okay. Take it up and uh, complete it as much as you can. I'm sure you know it will be quite interesting. I've given a step by step instructions. Okay, but but you have to ensure that you know you clean it up. Huh? If you don't clean it up, then you know you will incur. additional cost because it uses lot more other uh concepts such as auto scaling and load balancers okay so yeah please please take